Uh, today, I want to talk to you about the next mistake in my series, which is do your due diligence on sourcing agents. Um, so it's a Thursday morning, morning, and I'm in Clayton and Ward in Accrington, of all places. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting because I'm running down a street um, where I actually own a property. And uh, I've never seen this property before. And the reason I'm doing this vlog today is that I ended up uh, acquiring this property through a sourcing agent many years ago. And it's actually being, uh, it's actually under lease option ownership by somebody else now, as uh, it wasn't in my, in my, um, so, it's number. I'm just going past it, it's just the, the house over, that's all on the white one's over there. So, uh, Sam, if you can hang for left on the you see one of the houses over there is one that I actually own. And uh, the reason I'm doing this vlog like episode today is because when I first started in property, I was using sourcing agents to acquire my properties. And it was okay because I was introduced to the world of no money down back when you could legitimately do it. And uh, this was before I kind of understood everything. I'm just going mountain boy. And um, I think the point is, The point is, is uh, I didn't understand the process, and because there was no money down stuff, and I wasn't, you know, having to, all I was having to pay was a full sourcing fee, which means four and five grand was pretty standard back then. And, um, but it was no money down, so if you were getting a property that the valuation come in, you've got 25% equity factored into it, if you're getting a bit of a, what about you? Sorry, I'm just watching where I'm going. <laughs> as well um and um so I, I you know i was buying it and this was when back in the day where i was scattergunning i was just buying where the deals were presented by different sourcing agents because as far as i was concerned 25 percent equity in each one i'm putting in kind of three to five grand on average a deal and uh the, you know the spreadsheet analysis was saying that, that i was getting a ridiculously high ROI because such a low investment that's on the basis that it had no uh, Painters required for out of ten paid all the time. Well, actually, some of these areas were I'm not saying this one is, but some of them were pretty rough areas. So it's really difficult. I think I'm supposed to be going right over here. There would be a second while I got across the road. So I'm just going to cross over here. Right onto Warwick Avenue, which is here. Well, I'm about to go into a park, which is nice. I hate running around public areas with the camera because people look at me like in a quite threatening one. I've got a camera running past the house. But anyway, uh, I digress. So, so yeah, the, the key here is, is do you do on just the sourcing agent and a, a bit more do you do on the property? I think property analysis is, is different. You should do that anyway. But I think. Um, Right. I think where I'd, uh, where I'd made the mistake in the past is I think I'm supposed to be going through this way, getting lost again on my travels. Um, I think where I made the mistake in the past is that I, I'd looked at, I, hadn't, I didn't do enough to do this in the area. Like the properties look good. You know, you could see them from the valuation that they're structurally okay. All that side of things. But the, the point of the matter is, I didn't do enough to do in the area. I didn't know what the tempted by was, well, I just ran past the squirrel. Um, and, you know, it's, it's you make a lot of mistakes doing that. And um, as a result, when I look back, I'm selling kind of four houses at the moment. The one I just passed in, um, I think I'll go this way. So I'm left off the footpath, right? So I'll go this way. But, um, yeah, the point, the point of the matter is, I was, uh, I'm going right here. 50 minutes behind you, okay. Sorry, I'm losing my way. But anyway, um, yeah, the truth matters. If you look at, I'm selling four houses at the moment. The one I've just run past is one that I disposed of by a lease option. It hasn't gone through yet, so it's technically I still own it. But um, the point of the matter is, all of these ones that I was just buying through sourcing agents, I'm now disposing of some kind of 
five to seven years later. And the reality of it, what it is, is I've made very little of any of them. I was buying in areas where capital growth was minimal at best. They were predominantly rougher areas. Um, didn't even have, you know, robust tenants, tenancies in place for anybody that was able to stay in property long enough to make a profit. And as a result, as a result, uh, they were loss making. So even though I put nothing in, or very little in, 3 to 5k on a sourcing fee, you know, when I've been paying the mortgage over the course of time, I haven't been receiving the rental income, I've had damages, I've had break-ins, all this type of stuff, then uh, that's proven to be quite a heavy, heavy loss. Morning. So, the, the moral of the story here is that the sourcing agents that I was using back in the day, you know, they were ultimately taking the best deals and selling the, the not so good ones. But because they, they had access to no money down strategies at the time, it was too good to be true for an investor because you were getting such high ROI, perceived ROI. And I did a, a topic on this a while back about the, you know, the real net position in terms of p and of, of, of properties and that everyone goes by a salesy spreadsheet thinking that yeah, yeah, we'll make all of this. And the reality is, is it couldn't be further from the truth. So, you know, this is heavily linked into that. When you're taking on, oh, this one going here, I'm out of this, out of this park, and I have to try and get into it somewhere. Um, yeah, when you're, you're in this kind of, you're thinking, oh, they're putting scarcity on you, someone else will buy it, all this. And you're then making decisions based on inaccurate information. So, uh, I'm going to cut back through here. Um, I have no idea where I'm going. This is really muddy. This way. Morning. So, uh, yeah, the, the point of the matter is you can't go into an investment like this with, you know, on knee jack decisions, quick decisions. Don't get forced into them by uh, pushy agents. A good sourcing agent should, in my opinion, give you enough time to do your due diligence correctly to ensure that you make. Oh, I don't know if you, oh, that's dirty. To ensure you're making the, the right decision for you. And the investment and they should be wanting repeat business from you so it's in their best interest to give you a great deal and uh i look back on my sourcing adventures uh with other agents i was getting kind of hoodwinked into acquiring properties because there was no money down why wouldn't you do it and you couldn't argue with that you know you potentially get 25 percent equity so when i sell these any equity that so you know, some of the areas have gone down in value you know people say which is doubling every seven years not in some areas that I've got properties. <laughs> I've actually gone down. It's scary. And then, so you don't realise that equity. And then any equity you would have realised, you've got capital gains on, and then you've also got, not just that aspect of it, you've also got the maintenance and the loss making aspect of running it for the last seven odd years. <laughs> so, ultimately, the net result is a pretty big red figure. Uh, hence, I'm now disposing of them um, and consolidating my portfolio. But, um, yeah, you've got to, you've got to take it. And the reason I'm saying this is that <laughs> I was going to contradict things, but I'm entering the sourcing world now. And, uh, but the difference is with the stuff that we're sourcing is that if we've got a relationship with the government backed agency who are giving us 10 year pretty watertight leases, guaranteed rent. So we're, so we're giving you an ROI, which is real, it's guaranteed, and it's a full R fixed repair insurance lease. So, you know, from that perspective, morning mate. So from that perspective, everything's kind of covered in your cash flow and your return is protected. You get 20% ROI, you get your money back that you put in within five years, then you've still got five years of, a, of at least with an option to extend a guaranteed rent with no maintenance or deductions from a government-backed agency. So it's not, you know, somebody saying, oh, guaranteed rent, this is a government-backed agency so uh, uh the money is, is is certain in that respect so so um so yeah so that's my mistake today is that the point of, of talking about this today is that i'm running past a house that i'm still trying to resolve the issues and going back i'm just gonna run around here again a little bit further before i start running around people's houses again but, but yeah the point of the story is i'm running past Houses I'm still trying to dispose of seven years after I've acquired them, having made zero 
pop it on them. And I thought the decisions at the time were for the right reasons, but that's the power of doing your decisions correctly and something that clearly I wasn't doing. Um, otherwise, I would have possibly been able to swerve some of these problems that I've still got. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it that I'm going to talk about today. It's quite interesting that you can, you can kind of witness and see. Hang on, I'm just going back around here again. Um, actual real houses that, that um, have been acquired as a mistake in the Iowa State series and realised that it does happen. It's far more frequent. Now, the beauty of property is, in most cases, it's pretty forgiving. And when I say that, it's because I've had a relatively sizable portfolio and um, any losses running have been covered by the rest of the portfolio. So I haven't experienced the first time. If I had one house and I'd made that as my one house investment, that could have, could have wiped me out. And that's a, there's a lesson to be learned there. That when, you've, when you start acquiring a portfolio, it does provide you more security as opposed to you know, just jumping into uh, buy to let or being a landlord for the first time, just having one house. You're far more risky in from a cash position than you are if you've got a portfolio. So hopefully that's the lesson to take away. But to summarise then, do you do you do some sourcing agents? You know, see, speak to other people that have bought one through them, how they're getting on, how they're any problems, try and find people that have bought in the same area. Generally speaking, sourcing agents will be sourcing similar areas. Find somebody who's purchased in that same area that you were looking at and have had it for at least six months plus and get their extreme feedback experience. Um, also, look at the yeah. uh, do more digits on the, on the property, specifically the area. Speak to agents, find out you know whether whether they're going to be easy to rent out, what you're going to be getting. And uh, I think that's really important because people often on a spreadsheet will put a rent, the market rent at the top end of the area that you will be bought in. You might be the lower end of the market, so you, you need to obviously you understand the figures, uh, which is super, super important because that's the the cash flow, the yield element of it. Is there any unforeseen works that need to be done upon completion? I've had properties where I've bought them, you know, all fine, and then very, very quickly you get them and you have lots of work to be done on them, which is not ideal. So, again, something to consider there. So, do this, do this, do this, the early stages, because believe me, you want to have many, you want to have many experiences where you've acquired a property like I have in this instance. And uh, you know, the four I'm supposed to at the moment, all predominantly in the northwest, but the uh, are I live in Cambridge, so opposite ends of the country. So you can see the logistical challenges there. So try and stay local if you can. My strategy now is that unless I have some form of insurance or indemnity or guaranteed scheme behind it, I wouldn't acquire property anywhere within 45 minutes of my home. Uh, I know the areas, I know the market a lot better. And you know, I do learn from my mistakes. So, uh, do this on the agent, do this on the property, do this on the area, the three things, and don't be rushed into to, uh, to a sale. Okay? Um, if you've got a good sourcing agent, they want to create a long term relationship with you, and they're only going to do that by giving you quality investments that do give you the return, which gives you the confidence to buy more. And that's certainly a model that we're looking to undertake. So, it's pretty much it for me today. If you've got any questions, just follow me. I'm very open to this type of stuff. I can help people avoiding making similar mistakes. I'll certainly do that um, wherever I can. So drop me a comment, I'll, I'll respond. It's a bigger question, I'm supposed to do a vlog episode and take you in. Uh, if it's not for you, I'll follow. Well, I'm friendly, absolutely no problem there. But um, if you do that, please check out my Facebook group. Rather than uh, on my YouTube channel, I'm going to be there where all my 100 or so episodes are all catalogued nice and neatly by talking. So. Free resource you can look into on your own terms rather than getting your feeds cluttered up. Uh, if you do think it's a good value for someone, tag them in, share it, like it. Very much appreciated. And that's uh, pretty much it for me today. Hope it's useful. And I will stay positive, stay happy, and I'll see you on the next episode.